Hi, everyone. Welcome to Connection Squared. I'm Hannah Chapman, founder of X Squared Wealth Planning, where I help visionary entrepreneurs become more of their best self so that they can build their business and build their personal wealth with more joy and more ease. And in this program, what I love to do is bring on other entrepreneurs who are serving clients in a different way from what I'm doing, but still helping clients build wealth in their own particular way. And so today we have Natasha Ho, who's the founder of MySixFigureYear.com. She's a marketing and growth strategist, and she also has lots of programs um, for entrepreneurs to literally help them make more money in a way that feels good. And so that is what we're going to talk about today. And Natasha, please introduce yourself further and tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, Hannah. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited to be here. So um, yeah, my, my passion really is to help entrepreneurs, specifically female entrepreneurs who um, have been struggling to be able to move forward in their business without the hustle. Like they don't want that grinded out. And so helping them to be able to bring more play and fun into both their business as well as their life so that they can create more wealth, more fun, and more freedom in their business and, and really to enjoy it. Like all the things that we get into entrepreneurship for it's for the freedom and for being able to pursue our passions, our dreams. And sometimes that gets lost in the pursuit of growth. And so really being able to bring that back in so that we can have all of the, the pieces of the puzzle there in our experience of, of growing our business. Mm -hmm. And one thing that, um, I, that you speak to that really resonates with me as well is, you know, creating um, a business that feels good. And like you said, incorporates fun, incorporates, you know, the pieces of you that you love and that you can keep doing. Um, and that's, that's really important because, you know, I talk to my clients about that as well, but not on a like, Hey, we're going to do a deep dive on that. Um, so that's especially, I think where I want to have you talk about that because that's, you know, if I were to tell someone like, Hey, you know, it feels like your strategy is too broad. You know, I see you working with all these clients that you don't really love. Mm -hmm. How, how would I be able to filter them over to you? And like, what do you do with that when you get someone who comes to you in that space where they want to be making more money in like working with the clients that they actually are lit up by? Yeah. So I think the first thing I, I do when working with people is actually drilling it back. Because when I talk with somebody about building their perfect offer, what often happens is when people first built their offer, they just thought about what they do. They're like, this is, this is what I do. This is my gift. This is my zone of genius. And then they build a pick package around that. And then they get out there and they start trying to market it and sell it to people. And what often happens is when you start with what you do and you just rush out into the market with that, you start to get clients, but you don't really have any clear idea of what kinds of clients you're going to end up with. And so you have all sorts of people who start working with you and you start making money. And so you continue on this path because you're doing, it feels like you're doing the right things. You're making money and your business is growing. But what I see very, very frequently is people start to feel feelings of burnout and they're not really sure why. And then they might feel, start feeling like feelings of resentment around the work because they're like, I don't really want to show up for this. I'm not really liking this client that I have. I don't know how to fix this problem. And so when I work with people, the thing that I focus on is instead of starting with the what you do, it's starting with the who you want to work with. And so what you, by starting with who you want to work with and drilling really deeply into like, who do you get excited about? What's the, the world that you want to create and really the people you want to impact in that creation of this new world and who do you get excited to spend your time with by starting there we then craft the offer of what they do from that place because when you start with the who you can start to decide the offer based on what's going to appeal to bringing that kind of person towards you and attracting that kind of person so starting with who first and then really being connected to the why which we talked a little bit about earlier 
it's being connected to like why you're doing this. And that can tell you a, a little bit about the who as well. It's like for me, and for instance, it's like, well, my identity as a black woman, my identity as a mom, those are very, very important to me. And so I feel very connected to supporting people in those communities of female entrepreneurs, mothers, black women. Because for myself, like I didn't have a lot of exposure to the world of entrepreneurship. Um, I was grew, I grew up with the uh, age old I mean, this is for many immigrant families of uh, go to school, get a good job. That's the path to prosperity and success. And when I was, you know, going, I did went to school. I did all the things I was supposed to do. And when I got into my job, and I found like wasn't loving it. I felt like I was reaching a ceiling. I looked at my boss and I didn't want their job. I was like, I'm so confused because this is not how it's supposed to go. And it was when I had these ideas of entrepreneurship, the, the first thing that really drew me out of that world was seeing another black woman who had started a business and was doing something that I did not think was possible. She started a business around travel. She started a business around helping other black people to travel the world because she said when she used to travel, she didn't see people that looked like her. And so she wanted to create a community where black people could know that going off to these far distance lands was something that people like them do and they should do it. And this is what's possible. And, you know, what does it look like? And so that was the first time that that seemed like a real true possibility to me. And so she had a really clear understanding of who her people were. They were other black travelers, people who were currently traveling or aspiring to do so. And that led her to the what of what she created, which was this community. She created a uh, trips she created all sorts of resources to help these people and so just watching her example helped me in so many different ways one of me being able to see like the path to entrepreneurship for myself and also seeing what it looks like when somebody really has that strong understanding of who their customer is and then creating their product based on knowing um, knowing who that person is and what's going to serve them so if you start by who and then you create your offer it's much 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 like much more likely that you're going to create an offer that attracts the person you want to work with and ultimately gets you to the point of creating a business that you love running because you get to spend time working with who you want to work with doing what you want to do mm, yes I <clears throat> that that piece about representation and seeing yourself reflected in mm. you know the business owners that are around you <clears throat> excuse me i can't i can't even tell you like how much that resonates with me as well where where i was before you know it was a bunch of old white men like that was it that was the that was the financial advisors above me and probably like that exact same thought of wow i don't I don't want what you have. Mm -hmm. Like really, like if I really dig into it, wow, that's not what I want. I want something different. I want to create something different. Um, and I know you come from that kind of corporate space as well. Right. Um, yeah. Can you can you tell me a little bit about that journey? About you mentioned you you alluded to it a little bit. Can you expand on that? Yeah. So I, yeah, I went to school for public relations and I actually got a job in PR, which was like the, the biggest thing was I graduated like in the midst of the recession. So that was one thing. And then to actually be a college graduate who had a career in the field that you Yeah. Know, that was not like, normal then. Right. <laughs> So I, yeah, I worked in PR. So I um, started out in the healthcare PR field and then eventually made my way into working in the tech field with consumer tech and consumer products. Um, in, and I live in the Seattle area. So lots and lots of tech. And so I worked with all of the like big name companies, Coca-Cola, Neutrogena, HP. I worked with huge, huge brands and helping them to tell their stories to consumers, helping them to really connect um, via direct communication with their with the consumers as well as through the media. And the role that I had um, most recently, I worked with a startup in Seattle called Rover.com. And um, that was absolutely- I Rover. TVs <laughs> Rover, amazing. Yeah. Honestly, like Rover was an amazing, amazing place to work. I absolutely loved that team and I didn't see myself leaving. And the only reason that I did was because of the pandemic and the business completely turned upside down when the pandemic hit because people weren't traveling and they weren't going to work. So they didn't need dog sitters and dog walkers. And so they had to lay off about half of the, the workforce because of that. And so um, it was another wake up call around, you know, the whole go to school, get a good job have that security it's like 
that's a curie, even in the field of corporate, the corporate world does not exist. And so I had for a long time been sitting with the idea that I wanted to move into entrepreneurship that happened. And on top of that, I had a six month old baby. And right before I had gone back to work, I was really, really struggling with the idea of leaving my son at home and going back to work. And that first night, like I, I was crying, he was crying, I was crying. Yeah. <laughs> it was so hard. And I sat on the bus and I had a, a three hour round trip commute every day and just sitting there, it was, I, I had to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning or actually, no, he woke up at seven o'clock. I had to wake up before seven o'clock. And then I got to spend about, you know, 30 minutes to an hour with him. And then I had to go to work and then I came home at night and it was like an hour in the evening. And it was, it was really hard because it's like, this is not the version of motherhood that I want. And I knew what it was like for me as a kid growing up with a working mom, my mom was out of the house and I, it, I struggled with the, that because I missed my mom. I missed her so much and I didn't want to recreate that. And so that was another reason entrepreneurship really called to me was because um, I, I, like we already said, I didn't want my boss's job. Um, I knew that I wanted to do something different after I became a mom. I had seen these examples of other people doing something that appeal to me, for instance, uh, the, the influencer I mentioned earlier, and my husband's also an entrepreneur. Right. And so I had another example right next to me seeing like, okay, it's possible. And all these kind of messages were being sent to me, but it wasn't until I was really like, you know, you ask for something and then you just get pushed <laughs> right over the edge and okay here like, you go okay so now I lost my job I really really have to this is do or die and um the thing was that I in that moment I could have seen it one of two ways like my initial the initial way I saw it was honestly from the place of fear of like oh my god I need to go run out and get another job this is not the time to build a business uh I like you know we had a, a baby we had a mortgage we had hospital bills um but I had a mentor who I spoke with and he was actually like, he asked me like, well, why could now be the right time? And when I flipped my perspective and thought about, it, I was like, well, I don't have a job. I have all this time. We had a nanny who was still coming like two days a week to help us out a little bit. Um, and my job had given me my, the laptop from the company. They that was like a gift to us. So I got to keep the laptop and um, I was on unemployment. And the unemployment at that time, if you guys remember, was like, you got your regular unemployment, but you also got like an extra $600 a week. Right. So I was like, I'm getting paid that. And I had a severance package from my company. Right. So I was like, yeah. well, when in Is life, there another time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when in life does all of those things line up where you have like this money, like a little nest egg that we could sit on and our expenses like actually went down because we weren't going anywhere. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Anything. So it became the perfect storm to actually be the opportunity I needed and the push I needed to, to start my business. Mm. Yes. I can, I can relate to that so hard. Like, I mean, I started my business in, um, I was a financial advisor for a long time before, but I launched January of 2021, mm -hmm. after, you know, like through the pandemic, it was, we all worked from home, right? We all went home. All of my clients had my cell phone number. All of, you know, they knew they were used to working over zoom now instead of meeting in person. And it was like, this is it. This is the perfect time to yeah. make, that, make that leap. Um, it's all, you know, you can look at it either as, oh, that's terrifying. Or when is a better time? There is no better time. Yeah. 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 Love that. I love that. So I wanted to pivot, not even pivot, but just go through like this new program you have called sellout secrets. Mm -hmm. Um, because I mean, it just, it speaks exactly to like, how do you then create, how do you create the business that you want to create? How do you create the offer? Um, so that, you know, you can launch forward, or even if you have offers already, like, how do you make them better? Right. So that, you can build your business faster and get to that place where entrepreneurship is like, that's it. That's what you're doing. 
Totally. Yes. I'm so, so excited about this offer. It's actually, this came to me in the weekend that you and I met um, when we were at the event. Yeah. I, um, I was just like mulling over and pulling together all these thoughts that I had. I was like, oh, like something is, t- is calling me to like put something together that I feel like will really help people that are in that place of like, like I'm on the verge and I just really want to like take off and like launch in a really big way. And so, yeah, so this offer, Sell Out Secrets, it's really a perfect fit for somebody who is at the point in their business where they probably either they haven't started and haven't created an offer at all, or they have created an offer and they're kind of stuck at that point where they're maybe at like three to 4k months. Um, but they're trying to get to the point of 10 to 20 K consistent months over and over again, their business. Uh, this is also for the person who is at a point where they're feeling like they're trying lots of different things. Like they are trying lots of different strategies and lots of different tools. And they're feeling like I'm trying all the things, but I'm still not getting the result. Like I don't have the kinds of clients that I want. I don't have the kinds of income that I want. The lead generation might not quite be where they're, they want it to be at. And so they're looking for a real sense of clarity around what works for me and build it, being able to build out a specific pathway that will work for them in their business. And again, that it feels really good that they can show up to the business in a way that it's like, this is actually a really joyful, fun process for me. So that's really who this program is designed for. And so what I do is I take people through um, from start to finish several frameworks that, um, that I wish I had known when I was starting out. Okay. Um, Always really the best way to go. <laughs> yeah. What I wish I had known. And really what's had the biggest impact on for me. So the first thing is real, we focus really on creating a youth centered business. And so having a really strong understanding of the vision that you have for where you want to get to in your business, as well as how to take care of yourself in being an entrepreneur. Um, Cause that's something that not a lot of people teach you is how to take care of yourself in yeah. the process of being an entrepreneur and what comes up in that. So that's the first thing that I really, really focus on with people because I think if you don't have that the rest of those stuff doesn't even really matter if you can't really focus on who you are and what it is that you need and how to how to in integrate that into every piece of the business. So that's the first part. And then the next thing is creating the perfect offer. And so the perfect offer, it really applies to people at any stage of their business. I've actually gone through this process with my, my husband, who's been an entrepreneur for like 15 years now, and he got so much out of going through this process. So I was like, I know like no matter where you are in this journey, whether you're starting out or you're relatively new, or you've somebody who has been uh, an entrepreneur for some time that you can get a lot out of this. Cause I think even if you have moved forward in your business, that where you, who you want to serve and what's going to um, really help people the most, it evolves over time. So revisiting uh, what your offer is and what the perfect offer for you is in your business right now can change over time. So we go through that and really look at uh, starting with the who and then and the why, and then figuring out the what and the how for your offer. Uh, and the next piece that I focus on with people is the sales. And the sellout secrets was really the reason that I created this was because when I was work, when I was trying to sell, um, I was, or when I was trying to, to grow my business, I did not focus on sales enough. I focused on all the other stuff. It was like, oh, like, um, I'm going to get a website. I'm going to build social media. Um, I was like trying to figure out funnels and emails and all these different things. And I was signing up for all sorts of courses and buying these programs and webinars and all of these different things. And it felt like the process was so slow, so complicated. Like there was no money being made. And it felt like I was just spending money all the time to try to solve these problems. But I, I wasn't, it felt like it just got me deeper in the hole, honestly. And it felt really discouraging. And people would ask me like, oh, how's the business going? And I was just like, <laughs> don't ask me, please don't ask me. Right. I don't want to talk about it. Um, and so the, the turning point for me was when my, uh, my sales mentor, I told him about the idea that I had for, during the pandemic, which was to create a program where I sold online cooking classes, where every month you would explore a new cuisine, um, because a lot of people kept saying they were getting tired of eating the same food. And so I travel 
a lot and I also went to culinary school and so it was an opportunity for me to bring together my two loves travel and food and teach people about different ways they can mix things up in their kitchen so I told him this idea and he's like okay go sell it and I was like wait 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 I was like I don't have this I don't have that I need a website I need you know I have to go on Canva and I have to create some graphics I need a six-step funnel I need, I need, I need lead magnets. <laughs> and he's like, no, you don't need any of that. Go sell this first because you don't even know who you're, who's going to buy it. You don't know if it's going to sell. And so you need to go sell it first so that you can actually understand who is the person that buys this and, you know, how much should you sell it for is all of those different factors. So it was so, so important that I knew how to sell before I even focused on marketing which is, I think, one of the things that people uh, get backwards so often when they're in, when they're focusing in terms of starting up an entrepreneurship. And even when people get further along is that they put so much energy into marketing, marketing, marketing. And it's like your first thing is selling and closing clients because that is where the money actually comes from that sustains your business. (laughs) So yeah, selling first, always be selling as they, yeah, always be closing, always be selling either one, (laughs) always be selling. Um, So that was the thing that I learned from him. So in the process that I work with my clients before we spend a whole bunch of time on marketing, which is, I love marketing. That's my background. Like I spent Mm -hmm. years and years in the corporate world doing marketing, but the first thing you need to do is be able to sell because it's actually so much easier to find leads than people actually realize. The harder part is being able to train yourself to, to talk to people and ask for money. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's the key thing that I focus on with people first is being, and that's the no sleeve sales part of the program. And we really focus in on helping people feel empowered around asking for money and not feeling sleazy and being able to do that from a really powerful place. Uh, the next piece is grow it fast and made to last. And that's where we really focus on how do you create rapid growth in your business from a mindset perspective? Um, because the mindset is a huge, huge, huge piece. I'm sure you know this Hannah from your own network. Uh, the mindset is it's not just about strategy and tactics. You really have to know how to handle it, the, the mental blocks that come up. And then the last piece of it we really focus on is marketing and scaling your conversion into the future so that you can, once you've really got down the first pieces of the puzzle and you have a really great way to carry people forward from, um, from start to finish, then you can start putting more people in the top of your funnel without having those other pieces really cemented and knowing how to close people and knowing how to run the business in a way that suits you. We don't want to shove a bunch of people in the top of your funnel and then you have no way of closing them because if you have a thousand people but you don't close them, it doesn't matter. If you have, you know, five people and you can close all of them, that is really what matters. So that's one, the last thing that we focus on is then the lead generation and helping. Um, I help you to bring more and more people into your experience so that you can lead them through the process and ultimately turn those into customers and clients. Uh, the, the focus. Oh my God. So yes, the focus on sell, you have to be able to sell what you're doing yes. um, is that. Yeah. I, I would say the exact same thing that I see consistently um, the, the asking, literally asking for money and not just in selling and making offers, which is, which is also a big, you know, like, are you making offers? Are you right. offering your services to people? Like that's part of it. But even on the side of like, people owe you money, you've put invoices yeah. out into the world. Like you're like, like I have clients that have a hard time asking for the money again, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah. you know, like you did the work they like, they have to, they don't have to, right. But yeah, they're, they expect to pay you now. Right. Um, so it's like that, that whole mindset block. So that, yeah, that's a huge piece, um, that I find also in is a money block and a mindset block and a fear response and a people pleaser response. Like, oh, they're going to be bad if I ask again, or they're going to, you know, like all of those, all of those little, um, inner child fears that come up. Yeah. Around, around. And we're talking about like when you have a day where you don't have a lot of time to focus on your work and then it's like, okay, what can I do to have the most impact today? And it's like, whenever I have those days, it's like, 
okay, there's, where is the money at? Where it's like, okay, who's the person who already owes me money? Like following up to get that or, you know, asking the person who is the furthest along in the sales conversation to, to move forward or to have the sales call or whatever it might be. And it's like, that's what's going to move me forward. So whenever I'm like, you know, I only have this much time to work on my business. It's always about what is the sales activity that I can do in this moment instead of tinkering with my website or, you know, (laughs) which you can always do. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, what can I do? And I, I always say this to my clients is like, what is the fastest path to cash? What is the, that the client or opportunity that has the shortest distance between you and collecting money so that you can deliver the service and the transformation that you provide. And, um, you know, whenever there's a, you have this long to-do list of things, it's like, okay, we'll just cut all the stuff that doesn't actually have anything to do with money off the list for today. And just focus on the things that have to do with you being able to either serve your existing clients or collect money so that you can serve more clients. Mm. Absolutely. hundred yeah. percent. I think yeah. that's like the mic drop, right? Yeah. For both. Yes. Of us. Like, yes. Get the money in the door and then you can keep moving your business forward for me. Yeah. Get the money in the door and then we can, you know, build the beautiful legacy that you're, that you want right. to, um, hundred percent. So to wrap up, what is the one piece of information? Where do you want to direct people first? And then what's your favorite piece of wisdom to to leave on the table when we're done oh okay I love love both of these questions um the first thing um to get in touch with me there um the main way that I would recommend getting in touch is you can head on over to my sixfigureyear.com forward slash group and that is where my free group is located it's called the six figure marketing group and it's on Facebook so you can come on over there and I share weekly on um mindset as well as strategy that can help you with really accelerating your business. And you can also um, learn more about sellout secrets over there. If you are interested, Um, we are working on filling the first cohort right now. Um, So you can come on over there and join me. Um, And you can also, if you're, if you want to contact me directly, I also tell people this, if you're just like a person who's like, I am a fast mover and I want to like move forward quickly. You can also send me a text directly on my phone. It's 253-777. Seven five five two zero. I'm a fast action taker, so I'm always like have to like to, to give the information for my fast action takers. People who are just like, okay, just give me the details. I want you know how do I move forward? How do I get the thing? Um, so if you're that person, um, you can always just send me a text directly. The drivers and- on the discs. Disc yeah, speaker, right? exactly. yeah. Oh, I'm D. Yeah. I'm all D. Like ID. Yeah. <laughs> ID. Yep. That's yeah. me. My husband, when he, he got the, t- the test back, he was just like, oh yeah, I understand now why you are the one. I you see are. you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. And I get really upset with him when he's like taking this long roundabout way to explain something. I'm like, what's the point? Let's get there. Let's get to the point. <laughs> Less talking, oh, yeah. more action. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Um, So the last uh, point that I want to uh, leave you with, I have so many, um, so many things that I could say, but um, I think the one that um, that's been coming up for me a lot lately, and this came out of, I just took a trip to West Africa and um, I was in Senegal. And um, I, one of the things that that I noticed while I was there was that people everywhere were always selling (laughs) and like people there are like, everyone is an entrepreneur. Everyone is a salesperson. And so there were lots of lessons to be pulled from being in an environment where everyone has to sell in order to survive, in order to take care of their daily needs. And um, I noticed that people really were not deterred by who you were, what you looked like, what they thought you might say. They were really there to, to be able to like to close all the time. And um, one of the things that I, one of my mentors said to me recently was that it's a lot easier to sell to, to find people who don't want to sell to people who don't want what you have than it is to find people who do. Let me say that again. Cause I kind of fumbled it the first time. <laughs> it's a lot easier to sell, to sell to people who don't want what you set, what you have. Ew. Why am I fumbling? You're going to have to edit this out. I keep messing it up. <laughs> We'll try. I think it's beautiful. To sell to people who don't want what you sell than it is to find people who do. Mm -hmm. And really that was about 
the focus that you have to have when you're trying to grow your business is on prospecting for needs instead of for wants and finding people who need what it is that you offer versus looking for people who want it. Because being able to hop on the phone with people who want what it is that you're selling, yes, that's the dream. Everyone wants to be able to just find thousands of people who are just like, yes, I, I want that and I need that, please give it to me. But that's also can be very, very difficult and it's gonna be a very slow process because not everyone is aware of that and that they're not at that level of awareness, but people know when they have a need for something and when, they, when you can be able to have a conversation with them to fulfill that need that is when you can grow and you can grow really quickly and people always tell me like they have lead generation problems they can't find enough people to have conversations with and that's the main 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 focus that I, I tell people I was like okay you have to really start focusing on prospecting for needs instead of the prospecting for people who want what it is that you're selling and so every conversation that you're in all the time can be a prospecting conversation to identify the people who need what it is that you offer and so the reason that really showed up for me in West Africa was I was walking um, away from, we had gone ATV riding and I was looking for water and this gentleman comes up to me and he starts uh, showing me his artwork. And I was just like, oh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not focused on that, right? I was like trying to find water. But in the split second that I like kind of looked over, I like, I was like, oh, those are kind of nice. And then he like got pounced. He was just like, oh, okay, let me tell you about it. And he's like, these are made from the local resources. This is made from sand that's here in Senegal. And this, the uh, canvas is made from bark from the boab tree. He's like I get the trees from right over there and he starts telling me his whole story and everything and then now I'm sucked in and I start looking and I was like oh and now I'm picking which one I like the most and then he tells me the price and I'm buying you know this piece of artwork nice. <laughs> and he was just smooth and so you know he was prospecting everyone was a, a potential client and he was talking to everyone and you know being able to find an opportunity to find an in so that he could make an offer to them and so I was you know he didn't know who was going to be his lead in that day but he found me by being willing to have that conversation and then looking to see where was the need so that he could create an offer and sell to me so if you have ever struggled with lead generation and finding enough leads I don't know anybody ever has that problem Problem, but that's never been <laughs> that's ever been something that you have struggled with. That is the number one piece of advice that I have for you. Mm, I love that. Thank you so much, Natasha, for talking with us today and yeah. with me today. Um, and all of your links um, are going to be down in the show notes. And yeah, I hope I hope that your sellout secrets sells out uh, and its cohort. And I yes, I just I love talking to you, and I thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Hannah. It's been such a pleasure. So, so, so fun being here with you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.